A big thank you to Ridge for sponsoring this video. Now, this is gonna sound controversial, but I wouldn't be where I am now without Nikita Mazepin. Let's go back to the end of 2020. It was a time where we were all miserable and my videos had the comedic timing of Schindler's List, but one of them was about to kick my channel into a whole new gear. Why We All Love to Hate Nikita Mazepin was uploaded on the 24th of October of that year. At that point, Mad Lad Maz lied sixth in the F2 standings, yet for some reason he'd been linked with a seat at the Haas Formula 1 team. No one thought, though, it would actually go anywhere. The rumours were circulating at the same time as those saying George Russell was about to lose his seat in Formula 1. That sure aged well, didn't it? But then Haas did sign the Russian. And then he became the most hated man on the planet. And from there, me ripping into Nikita Mazepin kind of became a bit of a personality trait. Which brings us to now, just over a year since he lost his drive, and it got me thinking. Whatever happened to the walking egg? Let's find out, shall we? Before we do though, I want to give a quick shout out to Ridge for sponsoring this video. I was never a fan of having a big bulky wallet, and even when I switched to smaller ones a few months ago, it still wasn't doing it for me. Then Ridge came along and offered to send me one of their wallet and key cases, and I think we may finally have found a winner. Now as an F1 YouTuber, I couldn't not go for the carbon fiber design. These wallets are designed to hold up to 12 different cards, which is nearly twice as much as I had in my old one, and yet the size difference is, well, staggering. Then you've got the matching key case, which is something I never realized I needed. I've made the switch now, and if you want to as well, then you can head over to ridge.com slash fp1. The guys over there are celebrating their 10-year anniversary right now, which means up till March 26th, you'll be able to get a massive 40% off your order using the link in the description. You'll also get Ridge's lifetime warranty, and they're so confident you'll be satisfied with your purchase, they'll throw in a 99-day money-back guarantee if you're not. So a huge thank you again to Ridge. Now on with the video. Let's take us back to a year ago then and set the scene a little. F1 testing ahead of the 2022 season was taking place in Barcelona, and the focus was on Haas though they didn't particularly want it. The team had launched with a livery that, like the year before, had a striking resemblance to a particular country's flag. Haas denied this, trying to pass it off as mere coincidence, in the same way the moment I remove my face from my TikToks they get a spike in views kind of coincidence. My existential crisis aside, over in Russia, Vladimir Putin seemed to be in the same boat, though instead of making fun of it in a YouTube video, his solution was just to invade Ukraine. This put Haas in even hotter water, especially as title sponsor Araukali and driver Nikita Mazepin had strong links to the Putin regime. The FIA would ban the use of the Russian flag and anthems in all of its registered categories, though Haas took it one step further and terminated the Raukali and Mazepin's contract outright. And the glaring big issue aside, you can't really blame them. Mazepin's sole year in the sports hadn't been particularly great. Spinning into the wall three corners into his career really did set the stage for what was to come. And when Haas were able to sack off the Russian whilst keeping the majority of the sponsorship money he had brought in, it was a kind of win-win situation. Well, except for Nikita, obviously. In fact, he was rather pissed off. Hey everybody, as you know, I have lost my contract to compete in the Formula One World Championship this year. At first, the FIA, the highest governing body, has allowed me to compete as long as I'm a neutral athlete. But then, the team has cancelled my contract. Despite this looking like a ransom video and the key to sounding like a disgraced child who'd just been told to sit on the F1 naughty step, some people genuinely felt bad for the Russian. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding. No, they didn't. Mazepin used this video to announce a new foundation, supporting the athletes like himself who have been fired because their rubbish, sorry, have been wrongfully stripped of their chance to compete. He named this We Competers One. Yeah, not sure who signed off on that one, thinking it was a good idea. In case you're unaware, this tagline sounded suspiciously familiar to F1's We Racers One slogan, set up to tackle racism in the sporting community and to shut up Twitter. So, as I'm sure you can imagine, Mazepin's little charity fund didn't go down particularly well. Admittedly, however, the foundation has been relatively active over the past year. Their website is a bit of a joke, though, with pictures of Mazepin with the Haas branding photoshopped out. I'm sure this was done for dramatic effect, but instead just makes him look like a slightly suspicious personal trainer. There's also a phone number at the bottom, which I came very, very close to calling before coming to the conclusion I quite like not finding nerve agent on my doorstep. Anyway, with a return to F1 unlikely, Mazepin would look at other ways in which he could fulfill his desire for racing. This eventually led him into rallying, making his debut at the Ladoga Trophy in June. I've searched far and wide looking for how he got on here, 
but have had no such luck. Besides an interview where Mazepin claimed he was not doing it for the results, which I think is the typical answer when you've not done very well. And this is particularly surprising when you look at the speeds these cars are going at. Speeds that, given Mazepin's experience in Formula 1, he should be more than used to. To his credit, however, Mazepin returned to rallying one month later and won his class at the Silkway Rally. This technically made him a driver's champion. It's a scary sentence to say, isn't it? In 2023, Mazepin would move back into cars and international motorsport, joining 99 Racing for the Asian Le Mans series. This pitched him against a load of drivers so famous they don't have Wikipedia pages and Paul DeResta. So how did he get on here? Well, it may surprise you to find out, he's not actually done all that badly. The 99 racing car, which I have to point out is annoyingly car number 98, picked up a podium in the first round of the season at Dubai, before a poorer showing at round 2 dropped them back to 5th in the standings. The remaining rounds of the series would be held at everyone's favourite Yas Marina circuit, and the 98 car would put it on pole position for both of them. You heard that right. But don't panic though, Mazepin didn't set any of those times. Anyway, their good fortune would pretty much end there, Mazepin and his teammates slipping further and further down the pack in race 1. But then everything changed. Race 2 came around, the car was on pole once again, and Nikita Mazepin was in the fight for a win. Leading the race in the closing stages, Mazepin would find himself under threat from the number 43 car, driven by one of my new favourite names in motorsport for no real reason whatsoever, Nolan Seagull. In case you've forgotten though, and fair enough as it would have taken quite a wild scenario for a car to need to pass the 2021 Haas, Nikita doesn't take too kindly to, you know, fair racing. The move gave the Russian a warning for dangerous driving, and it was all in vain anyway, the 98 car missing out on the win, but still coming home in a respectable second to close out the championship. That left them fourth in the standings, and with two podiums to their name out of the four races, that's not such a bad job. Mazepin, though, has always been vocal about trying to return to the top flight of motorsport, trying to return to Formula 1. Now, do I think that will happen? Okay, I won't hold you in suspense, no. No, it won't. No one wants to touch Russia with a 10-foot barge pole right now, and rightly so. It would take a monumentally stupid imbecile to bring Mazepin back. Then again, Rich Energy is still around, aren't they? It's been radio silence pretty much since that stint in Asian Le Mans, the only update being Mazepin supposedly considering a career as a DJ of all things. Finally putting that spinning to good use, I guess. I do wonder, though, if the Asian Le Mans campaign is setting the Kita up for a stint in the World Endurance Championship. Controversies aside, he does seem to have shown that he's capable in such a series. Again, it just comes down to who has balls big or stupid enough to actually sign him. On that one, I guess we'll have to wait and see. But that was your life update on the Kita Mazepin. If you enjoyed it and want to see more videos like this in the future, let me know by dropping this one a like, subscribing to the channel, and leaving an insult down in the comments below. A big thank you once again to Ridge for sponsoring this video. Don't forget to use the link down in the description to get 40% off your order over there. And of course, a final thanks has to go to all of my patrons and members. If you want to help support me and the channel further, all the links you need again are down in the description below with all of my socials as well. Anyway, that's all from me. So I'll see you soon with another video, but until then, have a good one.